So here's the big question. How are entrepreneurs like us, who have been hustling and struggling to make it to success, who seem to make it one step forward, only to fall two steps back, who are dedicated, determined, and driven, how do we finally break through and win? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Brian Kelly, and this is the Mind Body Business Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. Man, I tell you, every time I get another guest to come on this show, I'm blown away even more. And I'm telling you, tonight is no different because we have none other than Liam Naden on, and he is in the wings, and he's coming to you all the way from France. And I'm going to let him tell a story of exactly where he lives at this very moment and where he has been living. That's pretty amazing. You're going to love this story. So you don't want to miss it. Stay on. And you, this guy is so intriguing. He has such an uh, amazing talent and experience from years of doing what he does. And it's very intriguing. And I cannot wait to share his brilliance with you. And uh, we're going to do that very soon. First, the Mind Body Business Show. It is a show that I had developed with you in mind, the entrepreneur, the business person, the person looking to take their business up to the next level. And by doing this, I interview only successful entrepreneurs. Primarily, sometimes I bring on someone just starting so we can do a comparison. But tonight, it's a very successful individual is on so that when I extract their secrets of success like Liam's tonight, you can simply take down the information of what he's sharing and then model it. It's amazing that, you know, success has been solved over and over and over and over hundreds of thousands of times. And there is no need for any of us, me included, to try to do it all from scratch because it's been done so many times and so many people have achieved success. It's just about finding that one recipe and you only need one, one successful recipe. And to do that, you just find someone who has achieved a higher level of success than you have and follow them, uh, ask them to be your mentor, model them, read their books, find out what makes them so successful and just simply basically copy them. That's what model means. And, and, you know, we've all been told from little bitty kids, it's not good to copy. Well, it's okay to copy. That's not the problem. It's about cheating. <laughs> that was the underlying uh, lesson when we we're kids. Well, copying or modeling a successful entrepreneur is not uh, cheating. It's actually what you should do. Every one of us should do it. Um, you, you would be a disservice, not only to you, but everyone that you'll impact in your life with your business going forward if you do not copy copy and get there faster instead of taking 10 years let's let's reduce that down to three how does that sound much much better that is what the mind body business show is all about i bring on the best of the best onto this show so that you can simply take notes model sometimes even partake uh, and take them up on their offers sometimes we have individuals that have amazing offers that you just can't pass up uh, tonight might be one of those uh, this is not a, a show to sell things but sometimes uh, it just so it means so much and it could change your life so much that we always we bring that to the front as well. And then you just make the choice. But this is not a seminar or a, a sales pitch show. It is simply to bring value and knowledge to you so you can be aware of things that you may not have been aware of in the past or maybe reinforce something you already heard before and said, now it's time to take action. There's so many wonderful things about this. And <clears throat> excuse me. The, there were there are three pillars of success that I, I call it. And real quickly, I've studied very successful individuals for a period of about a decade. And three things kept bubbling up to the top, three things that were in common. Mind being that each and every individual I studied that was successful had to a person a very powerful, positive, and most importantly, flexible mindset. Body is each and every of these individuals also took care of themselves both physically and nutritionally. Yes. And then business. Business is multi, multifaceted. Uh, it involves the mastering of a, num a number, a very numerous amount of skill sets. Each of these individuals had either mastered them or figured out which ones they needed to master in order to leverage the others to become successful. What kind of skill sets, you may ask? 
marketing, uh, sales, team building, systematizing, relationship building, uh, leadership. I could go on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> the good news is one of those skill sets, in fact, I mentioned it just a moment ago, is key. If you learn and master this one, then the rest you can leverage and get there quicker. And it's the skill set of leadership. And you may be saying, Brian, I don't have a team. How do I master leadership? Aha. You start by mastering leading yourself. And we'll, that's a whole topic for a whole other day, but there is no excuse to not master leadership and get to that level of success you're looking to achieve much faster. And getting to a level of success faster, uh, based on, uh, or speaking of that, is uh, all these successful people also, I learned, were very avid readers of books, and not just any books, but very uh, focused books on getting them farther faster in the business world. And with that, I want to segue very quickly over into a segment I affectionately call Bookmarks. Bookmarks. Born to read. Bookmarks. Ready. Steady. Read. Bookmarks. Brought to you by ReachYourPeakLibrary.com. Yes, Liam Naden is in the house. He comes to us by way of France. He's coming on in just a couple of minutes. Real quick, ReachYourPeakLibrary.com. A quick word of advice, and this is out of love. I would highly recommend that instead of going off and clicking away, and looking at the resources that you are given during the show, I know Liam will have plenty, is instead of doing that, and bring out that old-fashioned piece of paper and a pen or do it on your notepad on your computer. Write down the URLs, the web addresses, and visit them after the show is over. Because I've seen from stage many times where I know I'm getting to this pot, the, the part that really has the most uh, impact on an individual. And I used to see them get up and walk out because they had to go to the restroom or they had that all important text message, something that distracted their focus. And I would just hate for that to happen to you as Liam is talking. You're going to get some incredible nuggets of wisdom. And so stay focused, stay in the quote unquote room. That's where the magic happens. And just take notes. That way you can stay very focused on what Liam has to say. And yes, I promise he's coming on in a second. ReachYourPeakLibrary.com. That is a website that I had my team put together with you in mind. And literally, because I myself was not an avid reader until about the age of 47, which was about 11 years ago. Yep, you're all doing the math, I know. And uh, so, <laughs> yes, uh, I, I then learned, my gosh, this is an, a powerful, powerful way to change one's life at a very... I mean, look, it's very limited cost. Books don't cost that much uh, in comparison to a lot of other things. And it's a great low-hanging fruit, if you will, to take and read and then implement, model, execute on, and see your life change for the better. And I just started doing that about 11 years ago, as I said, because I was not aware of this amazing technology and app called Audible until then. And then when I started listening to books, I was like, oh, I love listening. I just didn't like reading with my eyeballs. And so I began reading voraciously through Audible for that very reason. So go to reachyourpeaklibrary.com after the show's over. So write that down, reachyourpeaklibrary.com. And all you need to do is look at the books. They're in no order whatsoever. Uh, just pick the first one that resonates with you, that sings to you. And you don't have to buy it from this site. This site isn't here to make money. Get it wherever you get your books, wherever you enjoy getting your books. And all of these links go to Amazon, I think. Uh, I think that's where they still go. And uh doesn't matter where you get it. Just go find a book that works for you. These are all books I have personally read. I personally vet. Not every book I've ever read is in here as a result. And so that is just here to give you a resource to increase the odds that you'll find a book that will not be a waste of your time. How does that sound? We don't, none of us want to waste our time, do we? And speaking of not wasting any more time, you know what time it is, don't you? It is time to bring on Liam Naden himself. Let's do it. It's time for the guest expert spotlight. Savvy, skillful, professional, adept, trained, big league, qualified. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it is the one. It is the only Liam Naden. Welcome to the show, Leo. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Brian. Oh, Thank you very much for having me on your show. It's um, exciting to be here. And when people find out what you're, where you're at, what time it is, and what you've done to get on this show, they're going to be more appreciative of you and thank you for being here, as I am. I'm very appreciative. 
I cannot tell you how much. I appreciate it greatly. Um, before we, we're going to have some real good fun here to get going because I'm going to ask you about your little backstory of why you live where you live and how you live. That's going to be a lot of fun. Everyone's going to enjoy that for sure. Uh, before we do that, a little bit of housekeeping, if I may. Is that cool, Liam? Sure, of course. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. So there is a nice red and white stamp looking logo over Liam's left shoulder. It's on the right hand side of the screen as you watch live. You're all watching live, yes? If you're not and you happen to be listening to this on a recorded podcast or recorded video, then I encourage you to write this down, themindbodybusinessshow.com, all the words you see, themindbodybusinessshow.com, and just click on any of the buttons that say how and where to watch and register. You get a free gift worth, I forget what it is, $300, a hotel discount card just for registering, and we're not selling you a thing. We'll just announce, give you live announcements or announcements the moment we go live instantly and you all you have to do is click the link that shows up in your email and you're on watching you can interact with us you can engage and the important part is you can enter to win a five night stay at a five-star luxury resort and that is compliments of our sponsor the big insider secrets that's why it's important because only people who are here watching live are qualified to win that so if you're not on you can jump on now we're all over the place facebook on many pages we're on youtube Twitter, you see all the emblems and symbols everywhere. Twitch, LinkedIn, we're everywhere. So get on the next show or get on right now if uh, you're uh, if you can hear this. Be sure to be watching this live so you can enter to win. And then we have a couple more, and we're going to get back to Liam, the man, the myth, the legend himself. So if you're struggling with putting a live show together, and it's overwhelming, and you want a lot of the processes done for you while still enabling you to put on a high quality show, and connect with great people like Liam Naden for sure, and grow your business all at the same time, then write this down, carpetbombmarketing.com. Then head on over to it after the conclusion of tonight's show. Carpet Bomb Marketing, saturate the marketplace with your message. And you can get a free uh, lifetime membership to the Reach RP Club. What that is, is your free membership. It will include instant access to deep discounts on major software services and top shelf training courses that you need to run your successful business. Think of it as your entrepreneur discount house, if you will. So catapult your business to the next level. Sign up for free soon after the show's over and get a hotel discount card worth $200 just for doing so. And then after that, go ahead and jump in and grab your deep discount. So write this down after the show. Head on over to reachyourpeakclub.com. That's reachyourpeakclub.com. Write that down. And yes, you're going to have several other URLs to write down, web addresses. Be ready because the man, the myth, the legend, Liam Naden is back and he is here now. Yes, ah, this is fun. So Liam, you have a great little right. story about where you are now, how you got there and what's going on that, you know, what is going on in your life that puts you where you are now physically, geographically. Uh, I love this story. Well, I'm in, as you said uh, earlier, I'm in, I'm in France. Um, I don't actually live in France. I live on a boat, um, which I have lived on for the last seven years. And I, and I guess, um, yeah, I'm, I'm what you'd call a, a nomad. I suppose my partner and I decided we like to travel and um, we set up a business that's completely online so we can be anywhere. So why not be on a boat in France? That's what it, we're doing. It's awesome. And, and you're, you don't just stay in France. You, you move about, right, on occasion. Oh, yes. We've in the last uh, five, six years, we've, I think we've been in 15 different countries around <laughs> Europe. That's awesome. And you even shared with me that you, you don't even go everywhere in the same boat. Is that true? No. We, well, this is actually our third boat. Yeah, we've tried different different sorts of experiences. I mean, if that's yeah. not interesting, everyone, come on now. That is that is amazing. I love that. Uh, and, and it's all because it's internet-based. So are you able to do that in the open sea, or do you have to be near a port where the internet is available? How does that work? Yeah, but it's surprising how... how uh, the internet's pretty well everywhere so i guess That's... we don't often go way out to sea so you know we we hug the coasts if you like and uh, <laughs> yeah inter internet's everywhere oh that everybody is... loves their loves their phones <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is so so interesting and intriguing. So you are a, an amazing guy. I want to 
give you the formal and respectful introduction that you deserve. Uh, speaker, teacher, writer, and researcher, Liam Naden helps you to understand the process for creating true success in your life by understanding how to use your brain the right way. Ooh, right down the pipe of mind and mind body business show to overcome your problems, achieving your goals and ending frustrations. How many of you would like to do that? He is the host of the podcast, Using Your Brain for Success and creator of Neuro State Rebalancing. This is going to be fun. That's NSR for short. A process which automatically gets the four parts of your brain working the right way to bring you the life you want. And this came with deep research and a lot of experience that Liam has put into this. Uh, let's see. Liam is also an experienced marriage and relationships coach. You're really going to hear about this part. Host of the Growing in Love for Life podcast. Okay, I'm counting. That's two so far. And <laughs> author of more than 20 books and creator of four relationships coaching programs. Maybe a fifth coming. We'll find out about that. Ladies and gentlemen, officially, formally, let's welcome Liam Naden to the stage. What an amazing, right off the bat, <laughs> the bio is amazing. Yes, and we have people all over. Let's see, Brigitte, oh, my good friend, Brigitte, the one and only Brian Kelly. No, no, we want to do Liam Naden, but I appreciate that. Lorianne Hood from South Carolina. How are you doing, Lorianne? It's great to see you again. She's often here. Thank you so much. And she's here because she learns a lot from people like you, Liam, and that's the beautiful thing about what we get to do together. And so what I wanted to do is open up with a question that I like to steer toward every time, Liam. And you know, as an entrepreneur, you've been one for many, many, many years and very successful at it. You've made your mistakes, probably still make some. If you're a human being, you probably are. We all do. But you're, I'm sure you're making far fewer now. But it still doesn't take away from the fact that every day you get up, there might be something that's arduous. There might be another challenge ahead of you, even one that you're not sure that's coming yet. But you know, having been an entrepreneur this long, it's not just this nice and easy stroll down the beach cakewalk every single day. So knowing that you're always going to be hit with issues and problems to solve, what is it that keeps you driven that's going in your brain, on in your brain? When you wake up in the morning, what is going on in your big, beautiful brain that keeps you driven, keeps you going day in and day out without fail? Well, I think it's probably what we're going to talk about, <clears throat> which is I'm very mindful of using my brain correctly. <clears throat> Excuse me, because here's the thing. When you learn how your brain works, you actually realize that you're not supposed to have problems. You're not supposed to have stress in your life. And if you do, it's because you're using your brain the wrong way. Because if you look at everywhere in the natural world, every other living species does not have stress or problems. We are the only ones who do. And we are biologically designed to be the best that we can be, which means living a life without problems. And this took me many years to um, to realize and, and, and understand because I used to be the sort of entrepreneur that was always pushing stress, problems, learning more, doing, I, I'd go to every seminar, you know, all around the world. I'd read countless books. I'd set higher goals, but I had all the stress and problems. And it was only when I, in my mid forties, lost everything, became homeless had to wow. move back in with my elderly mother and sleep on the sofa in her living room, that I finally thought, this isn't working. All the, all the stuff I've been learning and all the stress and the struggle, it's got me having lost everything. So I tried a different approach. So to aunt, this is the long, <laughs> the long answer to your question. What do I do in the morning? I think the first thing I think is, I'm, am I using my brain the right way? And I... I allow my brain when it's using the right way to guide me through the day to do the, the things that that I'm supposed to do. And it's quite a different experience to struggle, pressure, pushing, try, you know, dealing with problems, dealing with mistakes. Because after I lost everything and I rebuilt my life, one thing that was different was I didn't have problems and stress. And I had to figure out why this was. Why was I achieving so much success again without problems and stress? Why was it that success felt like it was coming to me? I wasn't chasing after it. I wasn't pushing harder and harder. And, I, and that's what I came to understand. It was a, a different way of using the brain, a more natural way 
of using the brain where we are when we realize we're actually biologically wired and designed for success I, i'm telling you I'm, I'm ready to sign up whatever it is you got uh, you know because <laughs> i mean how my goodness i mean we were talking about this a little bit right before the show started but it's now just setting in at a deeper level uh, that what you provide what you have figured out is there, there's no price tag one could put on it could can other people and i'm talking to you leon i'm talking to the the audience can you imagine not having stress can you imagine not having problems i can't even imagine that literally i cannot imagine what that would be like and that would be something that would be worth uh, just a lot uh, uh, just a lot unfathomable amount because i mean stress is what makes us sick stress is what kills us uh problems can you know they contribute to the stress if you don't have solutions to them right away and maybe you just i don't know I, i'm intrigued i really am intrigued on what you've come up with how you came about it and um, what is the process that you take the people that come through your coaching programs uh, that makes this happen, that they can then also achieve a stress less and a problem less life as well. Uh, this is going to be so much fun. Oh, my goodness. So uh, I just want to talk about that the whole show. That's all I want to talk about, because mindset uh, and you said earlier, this isn't really about mindset. It's about your brain. And so that intrigued me. I'm like, OK, how does that how does that differentiate? So there's so many uh, unbelievable questions I have for you. So I want to just open it straight up with to, to kind of set the table, if you will, to give you the opportunity to talk about what it is you do, your business, your coaching programs. You know, who are your target? Uh, who's your bet? Your your ideal clients? And then if you have a story or two, a success story or two that you'd like to share, completely uh, your stage, uh, my brother, I would love to hear all about that so we can then dive in deeper to what it is you do and, and what it is about um, when you ask that question in the morning, how do you know if you're using your, your brain properly the right way? Uh, I, I, I'm i like, how do you know that when you said that? So uh, if you wouldn't mind, just I'll, I'll bring up your website real quick and give us a quick overview of everything I just said. There were like three parts. You know, what is it you do? Who's your target market? And if you have a success story or two, I'd love to hear it. Well, most of my work for the last decade, or a lot of my work, has been in marriage and relationship coaching. And I help people who have really got major problems in their relationship where they're possibly facing divorce. And I've been doing this for a decade, and I've got coaching programs which are very successful to help people save their marriage and improve their improve their relationship. But one of the things that really drew me to what I've been talking about, about how your brain works, um, is what I realized is that many people weren't getting great results with the information I was providing. A lot of people were, and some people weren't. And I wanted to know what the difference was, because they were getting the same information. And people are equally motivated People, people were very motivated to heal their relationship. So that led me more laterally into, into understanding what really creates success in any area of our life. How do we get the results we get? And, and how do we get the results we don't want? And how do we get the results we do want? So now more broadly, I, I still do a lot of marriage and relationship coaching. In fact, I've got a book coming out very shortly about that. Um, but my, my work is also more broad now in helping a lot of business people as well, entrepreneurs, to really uncover what it is that gives us success in our life. So I do that through coaching and programs, again, both through relationship coaching, but also more general coaching. And um, I've developed a process called Neurostate Rebalancing and a whole program around that, which is about using your brain the right way. Because as, as we said earlier, no one's ever taught us how to use our brain, which is quite odd when you think about it, when, you, when we understand what the brain actually is. And we can talk a, li a little bit about that as well. Well, I hope we can about how the brain actually works. But that's what I do now. And just to give you an example, you, you asked for a success story. You know, as I mentioned, or you might have mentioned, I've been an entrepreneur. I've been in my own business pretty well all my adult life. And I've had 18 different businesses. 
a lot of them were successful some of them weren't successful so I, do, I understand the business entrepreneur mindset if you like and I think that's enabled me to help entrepreneurs to achieve success and I'll give you an example of somebody I worked with recently who was your typical entrepreneur the one I used to be stressed all the time always setting higher goals wanting to achieve more wanting to be more successful being really successful you know having a lot of money and doing really well but having a lot of stress and problems and thinking oh is this what success is is success overcoming obstacles and and always having to you know deal with problems and and is this what success is well it's not actually and what this gentleman found was he'd set up a business very successful and he had four different offices to his business and how it had happened he'd he'd started off with one he opened one office a new business and it was doing brilliantly Re he was making a lot of money he was and most importantly he was he was loving it he was enjoying what he was doing and so it was very successful so being your typical entrepreneur he thought well i need to open more branches and keep growing my business and be more successful so he opened another three branches three offices one of them did okay and two of them were hopeless terrible losing money and he went from having one very successful office to having four where one was doing well one was doing okay two were not doing well at all and he went from a life of feeling great feeling really happy and excited to being full of stress problems and worries and he had staff problems and, and he spent all his try time trying to fix his business and what after working with me for a little while he, he couldn't un work out how how he couldn't why he couldn't get it working why he continually had all these problems and he was pushing harder and he came to me and he said you know what am i missing i need to figure out ways to make these two offices work and the people there work better because it's draining my energy and it's draining my bank account as well as it's not making me more successful so what I worked with him on I said well look all of that stuff out there all of your problems everything that you get in your life on the outside is a reflection of how you're using your brain on the inside so what you need to do is you don't focus on the symptoms of your problem because the symptoms of your life are what's going on out there it's all the staff problems it's the stress they're symptoms of what's going on of how you're using this machine of your brain and when he use when he started to use it differently and allowed his brain to do its job he actually got completely different ideas about his life and his business and he said he he suddenly came one day and said you know i realize what i'm doing wrong i should close down those branches that aren't working well i should go back to having one branch why didn't i think of it before and of course it was the right answer and he did that and he went and he not only went back to being successful making lots of money again but he had no problems and stress and he was able to grow his business or he is able to grow his business from that basis and this is the problem we have as entrepreneurs or people in our business we're always thinking i've got to overcome problems i've got to and why do these problems keep showing up in my life and we don't realize that problems are a symptom of doing something wrong you know, I like to use the analogy of the brain being like a motor car because your brain is a machine designed to make you successful and when you think about a motor car what is a motor car it's simply a machine designed to do a certain job it's designed to get you from where you are to where you want to go and you know it's going to do that it's going to do it predictably reliably efficiently and very comfortably comfortably for you and you don't need to worry about whether it's going to get there you can just enjoy the ride so it's going to do that but why wouldn't it do that and you think what do you mean why wouldn't it do that well if it didn't get you to where you want to go why why wouldn't it do that in other words if the engine blew up or if it didn't run right it's only one reason you're not driving the car the right way if you got into it and had the handbrake on and the accelerator down at the same time and and you put the wrong fuel in 
it, you, it wouldn't be a fun, it wouldn't get you do the job it was designed to do. And it wouldn't be much of a fun ride either. It'd be full of stress and struggle and you'd be trying to figure out what's going wrong here. And I, maybe I need to get out behind and push this car. Maybe that's how it's designed to work. And you'd put in all this effort and struggle and, and if and it still didn't go right, you'd say, oh, the problem is me. I'm not trying hard enough. I need to be more determined, more motivated. So you'd push the car even harder. And without realizing that the car is designed to do its job if you use it the right way. And it's not supposed to be stressful. And if you've got a problem, show up, you're doing it wrong. And it turns out the brain is exactly the same. The brain is also a machine. The brain is designed to make sure that you live being the best that you can be, having the best life that you can. Because how I got onto this was, as I said, I'd been to seminars, I'd studied spirituality, religion, psychology, personal development. I'd read tons of books, you know, I did the fire walks, went to seminars everywhere. <laughs> Whenever there's a workshop on goal setting, motivation, I used to listen to recordings, hypnotic recordings for hours, literally of reprogramming your subconscious mind, changing your thoughts, changing your beliefs, all those sorts of things. I still, But I still ended up with nothing. I still ended up, it didn't, didn't really work for me. So I thought the thing that I was missing, that, and it took me many years to realize this, is when I went back to square one and I thought, how do we, you know, what, how does this all really work? Well, the thing that I'd forgotten about is we're biological. We live in a biological world. We're, we're a physical being. Now, that might not be all that we are, but we're governed by biology, by life, by the way this universe works. You know, it's like gravity. Gravity is a law. You know, you can walk out of t off a 10-story building. You're going to go down. You're not going to go up. doesn't matter how motivated you are, how much you pray, how much positive thinking you do. You go, it's a law that you're going to go down. And what I realized, this one law of the universe, of this natural world, which is called the law of thriving. And what that means is that every biological creature or organism or being, including us, we're biologically designed for one thing, and that is to survive, to have the greatest chance for survival. And to have the greatest chance for survival, that means to be the best that you can be. Because when you're your best, or when any organism, any animal, plant, insect, whatever it is, when it is functioning at its best, it has the greatest chance for survival. So literally every biological living thing is programmed to be the best that it can be so that it has the greatest chance for survival. And everything has been given a machine to make sure that happens. And we call that machine a brain. So we've all been given a brain whose sole function is to make sure that we're the best that we can be so that we have the greatest chance for survival. That's how we're biologically designed. So the question becomes, why aren't we the best that we can be? Why do we have problems and stress? Because you put it very well, they don't help us be the best that we can be. When we're stressed, they have a very negative impact on our life. So they can't be natural. We're not designed biologically not to be the best that we can be because that doesn't give us the best chance for survival. So when we realize all of this, we realize well, the brain is a machine designed to give you, to make sure you're the best that you can be. Then if we're not that, it can only be like the motor car, it can only be for one reason. We're not using this machine the right way. That can be the only reason. And like every other machine, if we're not using it the right way, problems are going to show up in our life. And it turns out this is all actually on a biological uh, level, as well as every other level, but particularly by this is actually true. This is how the brain works. And when you figure out how to use your brain the right way, somehow you don't have problems in your life. You don't have stress. Or when you do have issues that come up, you deal with them in a much more effective way. So, <clears throat> you know, this is what all, all I, dis I discovered was the difference between my life after I lost everything and started going and living on boats and and having a lot of fun and not having problems and stress, compared to previously where I had a lot of outward success and but a lot of problems and stress, was it was just I was using my brain differently and I needed to figure out what I was doing differently. And when I did, you know, that's when the penny dropped and that's what I teach people now. 
and and so you touched it on it very lightly but i imagine that for you to figure out what you figured out it took some time it took some experimentation it, it took some research and it took having clients that you've had success with to realize the magical elixir or the the proper uh combination of elements that you learned is that is that true or did it come quickly how did that journey work out for you well i was very lucky because i had a ton of information and knowledge already from you know literally decades of reading books and going to seminars and doing all of the traditional approaches to success if you like and then i had my own life which was working quite differently in a much better and and easier and and more successful way um but yes i i also did a lot of research and one of the other great things i could do working with people helping them with their marriage and relationships and and later with other aspects of their life i could see what actually worked what really worked because can i just say one a couple make a couple of other points here you know we talk about yeah. success what is success and some people say oh everybody has a different definition of success and you know that's not actually true we all have exactly the same definition of success and it's interestingly enough it's the same definition that all science all biology all spirituality all religion teaches us what success is success is only one thing success is being happy and when you really think about it everything that you think success means oh no success means i've got a really great business or i've got a great marriage or i make this amount of money or i have this amount of or i have this physical these goals that i've achieved you don't want any of those things you want what they think what you think they'll give you and you think they will make you happy that's why you want them and it turns out biologically we're designed to be happy when we're happy we are being the best that we can be because when you're happy you actually are using your brain the right way and I'll explain a bit about how how that works if you like but we're using our brain the right way so we are resourceful creative excited imaginative everything's going well in our life that's when we're happy that's what we're all looking for and that's the definition of success that is uh thank you for that cuz you you basically uh chunked it all the way up to where it it lands yeah i was thinking about that cuz it's interesting that you you just answered the final question of the show you kind of leapfrog you didn't know that i was going to ask that at the end <laughs> that was like and i will ask you to re to reiterate that and i'm sure it'll come out slightly differently but i i i'm going to be compiling a collaborative book uh with every past guest expert i've had on here and their definition of success and uh it's going to be phenomenal i can't wait to include yours uh, and and I like to have it at the end because my team now knows to go chop that piece out for video shorts when we're done because they're okay. so uh, impactful. And I I love how you've no one has said this. You're the, the first one to say, well, everyone says it's how they define success. No, it's not. I was like, oh, I like this. He's like right at you, but you're right. When you think about all the reasons everyone gives for success, the bottom line is is because that part. That they call success makes them happy i mean it's the common denominator and it just makes total sense but yes please you've teased a couple of times and you've, you've been very nice in asking uh, if you want me to uh tell us how the brain works so we can start getting a better understanding of what it is you have figured out without giving away your secrets of course but uh, yeah i would love my goodness i'm like eating this up i i haven't been watching the time i've been enjoying this so much so i hope you're good for another two or three hours while you're out on your boat in france i'm just kidding oh but sure yes. well it's middle of the night here so uh <laughs> you know, what's time time is, is an illusion there you go yeah, <laughs> yeah i'd love to hear what what you uh how the brain works you were gonna you were gonna give a, hopefully a, an overview of how that works how our brains work Sure. Okay. Well, the key thing to realize is what I've mentioned before is that your brain is a machine designed to for one job, and that's to make you the best that you can be so that you have the greatest chance for survival in this physical world. And by being the, being the best that you can be, that means not just best physically, but mentally and emotionally, which means you're happiest. So you are designed to be happy, which is and your brain is the machine that's designed to make sure that you live a happy life to be the best that you can be. 
but anyway, there's a whole site. There are, you know, there's been many, many books written about the brain and how incredible the brain is. I mean, we don't realize this is the most powerful computer machine that exists in in the in, on the planet. is is absolutely unbelievable. The power of your brain. It's far more. It, 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 I think it's been compared to the computing power of 500 trillion computer microprocessors. That's what the computing power you have in your brain designed to make you be, make you the best you can be. That's what it's trying to do. So essentially, our brain is designed, um, sorry, divided into four parts, and these are all separate physical locations in your brain that have different functions. They've all got technical terms. Sci you know, they're all scientific jargon, but I've I've broken it down or I've I've condensed it into a model which is quite easy to understand, but just realize that these all do have technical, you know, equivalents. <laughs> this isn't just an idea. So essentially your brain has four parts. The first part is what I call the thinking brain. And the thinking brain, which is located on the top of your head, what it's designed to do is to gather all of the information about all of your experience throughout your life and every moment of your life, everything that you see, smell, taste, touch, hear, all of your ideas, all of your thoughts, all of the information, your thinking brain takes this and it stores it in what is essentially a large library or a database, if you like. That's the thinking brain. So you can, so that you can use this information when you, when you might want to use it. Okay. The second part of your brain is your emotional brain or your feeling brain. And this part of your brain is responsible for how you feel. So how it works technically is that it, it generates chemicals, creates chemicals, we sometimes call them hormones or neurotransmitters, and they determine how you feel. They're like signals to your brain, to your body on how to feel. So they make you feel happy, excited, loving, all those things, or they make you feel stressed, worried, fearful, anxious. This is all controlled by your feeling brain, your emotional brain. The third part of the brain is what I call the survival brain. And this is actually located at the back of the head. And this, as the name suggests, looks after everything to keep you alive in every moment, your survival. So it manages all of your automatic functions, the ones you don't have to think about, like your breathing, your, your heart beating, all of your organs working. It just keeps you alive from moment to moment. And there's one other really important function about staying alive, and that is managed by the survival brain. And that is in response to events in your life which happen only very rarely and they are things that are a threat to your survival because remember when you think about it what i mentioned before is we're designed to be the best that we can be which means to be really happy being creative resourceful our life going really well we're making the right decisions the right things are showing up in our life this is all managed by our brain to ensure that we have the best chance of survival by being the best that we can be and being really happy but there's only one time you're not supposed to feel good, happy, and being the best that you can be. And that is every now and then something might come into your environment that's a threat to your survival, mm. something that could harm you or even kill you. And remember, the brain was designed millions of years ago when there were a lot of things around in, 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 the, in our environment that could kill us. You know, we'd be walking down the forest and a lion might run out from behind a rock. So the brain has a function designed to deal with that. And obviously being happy and being excited and doing all the right things, that's not, not the right state to <laughs> deal with the lion. So what the survival brain does, it actually comes through the emotional brain, but the emotional brain, it's a bit more complicated to explain, but it actually recognizes that instead of your environment being perfect to allow you to be the best that you can be, you're, you're presented with a threat to your survival, and you've got to deal with that there and then. So it sends a message to your survival brain which says, there's a danger here. There's a lion coming. Stop being happy. Stop being creative and enjoying life. <laughs> React. Deal with that. So obviously, and the survival brain kicks in something we call sometimes the fight, flight, freeze mechanism. Right. It activates something called the sympathetic nervous system. This is how it works technically. And what do you do? Well, you react. So you jump out of the way or you run away or you shout out for help or you stand and fight, whatever the threat is. And you just, and you, we've all felt the state where you, you're not thinking about it. You're just reacting. Something's taken over in your brain to get you to react and to deal with that threat. 
And the idea is, when once you've dealt with that, once you've got rid of the lion, your brain says, okay, everything's fine now. You can go back to being happy and being the best that you can be. You've dealt with that threat to your survival. So this mechanism is really, really important. This you know, reflex action, the fight, flight, freeze reaction. That's all managed by your survival brain. So that's all good. Now, the fourth part of your brain, and science has only more recently started to research and discover, this is actually a separate part of your brain physically in your head. And it's what I call your creative brain. And your creative brain is actually the, actually the part of your brain that is supposed to run the show. This is the part that when you use it the right way, when you're using your creative brain, you are being the best that you can be because you're allowing your brain to bring you and do for you everything that you need to be the best that you can be. That's its job. So your job is actually to allow the creative part of your brain to run your life. And that's when, and we know we can describe that what happens when you're using your creative brain. It's as the name suggests, it's when you're being creative. It's when you're coming up with great ideas. It's when you get those gut feelings. Ah, no, I shouldn't do that. Or, yes, that's the right decision. You have this knowingness about what is the right thing to do. And you come up with new ideas and you go, there's a better way to do that. I never thought of that. And it's also where your motivation comes from, your passion, your excitement. It, when you're in this state, you actually are, are much more productive. You achieve a lot more because this is what it's designed to do. It's designed to make you very resourceful. This part of your brain also, now, and it took me a while to realize this, is we call, we have these words called luck, coincidence, synchronicity, chance events, and that's what we think they are. But when you realize that your creative brain, when you're in your creative state, what happens is your awareness raise, rises and you realize there's no such thing as chance events in your life. Your brain actually has the power to manage your environment to bring you the right people, to bring you the right situations, to enable you to be the best that you can be. So that's the fourth part of your brain. And, and this is really the state that all of your life is supposed, if you want to live your life being the best that you can be, you need to manage your life using this part of your brain. But here's the big problem. This is, and this was, is really the crux of the matter as to why most people are not using their brain the right way is because because what actually happens when you're in this creative state and you're managing your life well and you know scientists or, or should i say peak performers have described the state given words for the state for things like being in the flow being in the zone religion talks about it as being in, in a state of enlightenment if you like <clears throat> these are all words to describe that you know musicians or composers have said <clears throat> you know i just heard the music and i wrote it down i don't know where it came from wasn't from anything I thought about, but it just came. It's coming from you using your creative brain. But what happens is, in this natural state, when it, when things are going well, that's all very all very well. But remember, I mentioned that survival instinct, which is there to deal with an immediate threat to your survival. Anything that unusual that comes along that could harm you, there and then, not some imaginary idea, but something that could physically harm you. And what happens to your brain? is when it recognizes that there's something that could harm you or be a threat to your survival, it takes you out of that creative state and it activates your sympathetic nervous system and that shuts off all of your creative brain and gets you to focus on seeing the problem, wow. the, the danger that exists in your life that's there and then. Where's the lion? How far away is it? How big are its teeth? Is it coming for me? You know, is there a snake in the grass? What's that noise? Is that a danger as well? But what actually is, and this is all perfect when you're dealing with a lion, but what actually happens is it shuts down your awareness and it blocks off your, the creative part of your brain. And it does that. What activates this part of your brain, this fight, flight, freeze mechanism, is fear. So the minute you feel fear, and that includes stress, worry, and anxiety, what's actually happening on a biological level is your brain is telling you that there's a threat to your survival, and it's activated the survival instinct in your brain. And it's blocked off all of your creative resources, all of the resources that are, are there designed to make you live the best life possible. And what are most people doing? They're trying to live their life. They're trying to figure out their life. They're trying to create their life. 
using the survival part of their brain, which is not designed to do that. It's designed to get rid of a lion. Wow. Because this part of your brain does not have any of those resources. Knowing what to do, knowing what the right goals for your life are, the right decisions to make, the right ideas, all of that is in your creative brain. And you don't have any access to that when you're in, this, when a, in a fearful, worried, stressed, anxious state. And we know that. And this is what I used to do. And, I, and what do we try and do usually in that state? We try and figure out what to do in our life. What, what should my goals be? Oh, I need to read another, I need to sit down and get clear on my goals and I need to figure stuff out. And I need to try harder and be more motivated and more stressed. You'll never do it. You will never do it because your creative brain, thats you won't know the right thing to do. And haven't we all had the experience where we think, I really need this to be happy. I need to achieve this goal. And you never get it. And if you do, it doesn't make you that happy anyway. It's because you you can't set the right goals if you're not in your creative state. Your brain, your creative brain, knows what the right goals are for you. They know what's going to make you happy, even when you don't. When you're trying to, while you're trying to figure it out, based on what you think you might want to be happy, your creative already brain already knows what you might, what you need to be happy. And it might be, you need to be sailing on a boat around Europe, or you need to be <laughs> doing something different. You can't know that. But your creative brain does. And this is, as I say, this is what it took me many years to figure this out and realize this is so true. And you know what's really interesting about all of this? I thought, why has no nobody told us about this? Why has nobody told us that your brain has the ability, the power, and it's designed to do the job of giving you the best life possible, but you can't do it in a stressed, worried state? Because that's only designed to get rid of an immediate threat or danger. I thought, why has nobody told us this? Why has nobody ever given us instruction manual? It's a bit like saying to somebody or someone saying to you, can I take the car for a ride? And you say, well, do you know how to drive it? Oh, no, but, you know, give me a one-second tip on how to get it, how to drive it, and then I'll be fine. It just doesn't work that way. You say, well, you, you can't drive a car. It'll never get you anywhere if you don't know how to drive it. But no one's taught us how to use our brain. But the funny thing is we have all been taught this. And you know where we've been taught it? in the Bible, in religion. Because what does the Bible say? The Bible is actually, and I was brought up a Christian, I'm, I'm no longer a practicing Christian, but I find it fascinating. The Bible is the best instruction manual on how to use your brain the right way that exists. But no one's ever taught us that way. But it tells you exactly in the Bible how to use your brain the right way. Because it says more than 360 times in the Bible, be not afraid. Those three words, be not afraid, because what happens when you're afraid? You activate the wrong part of your brain. You activate the part of your brain that's only designed to get rid of the lion there and then. It's not the part that's going to give you your ideal life. So it's not just a nice idea. Try not to be so afraid. Don't worry so much. Everything. This is a, a, a biological, physical instruction. When you're afraid, you're in the wrong brain state, and you'll never be able to figure out your life properly, and you'll never... You'll do what you what that part of your brain is is designed to do, which is to look for problems. And if it's if it manages to you react and get rid of a problem instantly, it's going to find more problems. That's what it, what it's designed to do. It's designed to find problems. It's not designed to create your ideal life. So that's why the Bible says, "Be not afraid." Fear is the enemy. We don't realize that fear. It's like someone comes along to you again. You know, mentioning the car and says got this new fuel here and it's a mixture of hydrochloric acid and uh and uh the olive oil and water and you should run your car on that and you go hydrochloric acid what are you talking about <laughs> oh no it's good and you, and you say no but I, i'm not going to drink that i know that how dangerous it is oh but if you don't drink it your grandmother will die or your grandmother will tell you that it's really good and everybody else is considering drinking or uh, drinking this hydrochloric acid mix it's really good for you and and not only that but if you're really motivated and if you pray hard and you believe and you have the right beliefs you'll be fine it's great and you go look you don't obviously don't understand how the machine of your body works it's going to kill me it's going to damage me it's not designed for that there's no way i'm going to drink hydrochloric acid because i know what it's going to do to me it's the same with fear when you understand what fear anxiety, stress, worry actually do to your brain and therefore your life, you say, 
there's no way. I've got to do everything I can to get rid of fear in my life. That's it. And it doesn't matter how justified you are. The fact that everybody else is doing it and saying, well, you have to stay informed about what's going on in the world. And we live in this terrible world where we're all, you know, we're all, it's so dangerous. Remember, these are all ideas that come from your, the wrong part of, you see it like that when you're in this fear state. It appears to be dangerous. The world appears to be limited. You appear not to have much power over your, your own life. But, but that's not the truth. It's just the way it appears to you because your brain yeah. that's what it can see in that state. Wow. So this is really what I've come to realize is that the heart of everything, when you realize, understand how your brain works and it's going to get you to where you want to go easily, enjoyably, you can just enjoy the ride, which is what you're supposed to do. You just need to manage your brain state to say, I need to make sure I don't put fear in. I mean, obviously, if a car is coming towards you and you need to jump out of the way or someone's about to hit you, you know, there is a role of fear in your life. But that's it. Most of the time we think there are a lot. We're, we're walking around looking at lions coming at us all over the place and they're not, they don't exist. They're all imaginary. It's all in our, this is our brain telling us it's real because we've got all of these ideas programmed throughout our life. That life is hard and we're just a victim. And, you know, the government might do this and we've got all these dangers and threats. They're not real. And when you live in your creative brain state, you see the truth that they're not actually real. And you go, why did I worry about that? That's not going to happen. Or it didn't happen. Or, you know, it's it's ridiculous to think about that. And you're busy doing what you're supposed to be doing, which is being the best that you can be. Coming up with great ideas, being unique. You know, we talk about us as entrepreneurs. To make the right decisions, you need to realize you are unique. And you are programmed, your brain is programmed to bring out the best of you, the uniqueness of you. So why not let it do it? Let it do its job. You know, you don't get out of a motor car every five seconds and check that the engine's still running and that it's going <laughs> in the right direction. And you just know it's the way it works. It's like we just need to get out of our own dang way. It's what it's a lot of it. And uh, we have a request that just came in a little while ago, actually. But Lorianne Hood is asking if you can talk for another hour. I'm with her. <laughs> totally. Oh my goodness. So much. I mean, I was, you know, I opened the show by talking about taking notes. I'm on page three and I'm running the show. That is my third page <laughs> and I'm getting writer's cramp and I'm loving every painful moment of it. I'm kidding. I'm not getting writer's cramp, but I am writing vigorously. Uh, this is so fascinating. It makes nothing but sense. Uh, having, you know, neuro-linguistic programming background, learning about the, the amygdala, fight or flight, everything you just said about how it shuts down the creative process or the creative side, which is not a part that is taught in NLP, you know, about that part of the brain taking over. But we do talk about releasing uh, the root cause of fear, and it does, it changed my life in a great way. So everything you've said is like spot on, makes total sense that one cannot work if the other one is blocking it. And so I, it sounds to me like the key is, like you just said, controlling one's brain state. And that is when fear, worry, uh, anxiety, stress come into your life, I'm guessing you have found out the way, a proven way to quickly move away from that and get that out of your life so you can get back to the creative state. Is that a, is that a good way of uh, succinctly yeah. <laughs> seeing what it is that you do for people? Well, that's essentially why I've created neurostate rebalancing, because <clears throat> there's really t only two. Well, there's actually three things you need to do. And I have a whole coaching program that goes into to detail about this. But the first thing you need to do is really just understand what I've been saying, that this is the what you're designed to be. This is how life works. This is what your brain is designed to do. It is a machine. You are supposed to be happy and being the best that you can be. And the more you realize that, the more you understand that the more you, it's a bit like with a car, if somebody came along and said, oh no, the way to, way to get out and push it, or, or should I say, once you know how to drive a car, once you know how it works, and you don't need to know a lot of technical stuff about a car, you don't need to know what every little wire and all that is, you just need to know a few basics. But once you know that, then you just say, well, that's it's totally logical, natural that I should use the car in that way. But that comes from understanding. So it's the same with your brain. Once you understand a bit about how your brain works, you go, well, it's logical. That's the way I should should use it. So that's the first important thing. And then yeah. you realize that fear 
is that is your enemy you know life is not an external game life is an internal game it's all about your thoughts you know jesus again talking about the bible he went into the wilderness for 40 days before his um whatever crucifixion and he he was battling the 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 demons which were his thoughts this is the only battle we have with our own thoughts so when you realize that and you realize that fear is the only enemy fear is what's switching your brain at the wrong state then you've only got to do two things so after you understand how the machine works the second thing you need to do is you need to start monitoring and eliminating anything that's coming into your life that's making you feel afraid now that could mean and people say well how do you do that I, I i have no choice i've got to live with fear and stress but that's completely untrue isn't it you actually have complete control over what you allow you have a choice as to what you allow into your life you don't have to watch that tv show or that news item or whatever it is that makes you feel bad when you realize what the effect is it's having on your life you're going to switch it off mm. you don't have to have that conversation with that person that makes you feel bad when you realize what it's doing to your life you can say well no, you know, sorry, I've got to go and watch some paint dry or, or something like that. You know, you don't need to have that relationship with that person, whatever it is, it's an employee or a, or a um, romantic relationship. If it's making you feel bad, you don't have, you have the choice. You don't have to be there. You don't have to be in that job or own that part of your business. Like the man I talked about earlier, he realized he had a choice. He didn't have to try and flog a dead horse with the parts of his business that w was working. He could, he had a choice to get rid of them. And you have a choice. You have much more choice than you realize. And when you realize the stakes, what's at stake? Your life is at stake. That, because what would stop you from getting rid of something in your life that was making you feel bad? Fear, worry that something wasn't going, good wasn't going to happen. You know that you don't you don't want to get rid of that part of your business because you think, well, I need to fix this part of my business because if I don't maybe there won't be a better opportunity that comes along or i need to keep that employee who's not not very good because i won't be able to find anyone else or anyone else who's better and i know this is true because this is what what i used to do all the time <laughs> but what's stopping you it's fear and it's the lack of understanding not realizing that if you create the environment where your creative brain can work it's going to bring you all the right ideas it's going to bring you all the right people but if you worry about it you're blocking that part of your brain's oh ability gosh. to do that. Ah, oh, this you know, is you don't you don't powerful. worry about when you're driving a car that a cars coming the other way. You don't worry they're going to hit you. You don't worry that the car is going to break down or the engine's going to blow up. You just you don't need to worry about it. You just say, well, it'd be crazy to worry about any of those things. This is just the way it works. So that's the the second thing and the third. So, and this is probably one of the main things I'd really encourage your listeners to think about is realize that you have what is what are you allowing into your life or what's coming into your life that makes you feel bad and realize that's the toxin that's the problem if it makes you feel bad you're finished <laughs> you've got to eliminate as much as you can and the more you start doing this the more you are going to really get on a roll with it and you start to eliminate more and more things out of your life naturally that aren't working for you and you replace them with things that and you and your life goes in you know remarkable directions really things you call miracles start showing up on a daily basis and, and you start off thinking how did that happen where did that person <laughs> come where did that great eye get that's so weird until you realize it's your brain at work it's your creative brain doing all this for you and you're supposed to just play your role enjoying it you know and we've all had this experience where someone comes along and you know you make a good connection it's the right business deal and it all flows and there's no stress you know there's effort but there's no problems attached to something when it feels right and when it's working right you actually don't have problems things work out for themselves and the third thing is and this is what new state rebalancing does it's a process i've created because once you've stopped putting all the negative fuel in the things that are activating you to, to your, the wrong part of your brain your brain also has some stuff already in there it's a bit like the engine this still full of old oil and and gunge you've got a bit of do a bit of reconditioning and you've got to retrain your brain because remember what's really happening 
on a biological level, when you feel bad, is your brain is saying there's something in your environment that I believe, that I've been trained to believe through all of the conditioning and life experience of what you've told me, good and bad, and what danger and safety is, there's something in your environment that's a threat to your survival. So the sales figures for your business come in and they're down <laughs> and you feel stressed. And what your brain is saying, that's a threat to your survival if your sales figures are down because you might end up homeless. You might end up with nothing if you don't keep growing your business. So, and you know that's ridiculous. That's not true. It's not true. I mean, well, I, it was for me. I lost, every, I lost everything and became homeless. Didn't help me in that regard. But we have this fear. And I think for, for most of us as entrepreneurs, most people really are, we are, if you really think about it, there's so much fear attached to yeah. what, how we live our life. And we're always trying to learn more, set more goals, do more stuff, because we're afraid. We're afraid we don't have enough. And if we don't keep pushing, yeah. we're, some, we're not going to achieve or somehow in life, we're not going to achieve our full potential. We have all these fears. And they're all sitting inside our brain. And we need to get rid of those ideas so that we, we, we stop feeling bad when there's nothing to feel bad about. Nobody on this planet should feel bad. We should be the happiest people who've ever existed in history because we have more than anyone's ever had. If you were to go back 200 years and say, you know, can you imagine there's a little switch on, on, a, on a thing called a bench top and when you turn it, fresh water comes out? They go, no, you can't have that. What's that? And you can get in this thing called an aeroplane. You can fly, go, fly through the air to anywhere you want to go in the world. They'd say, wow, if, you, if I had that, I'd be so happy. Life would be so amazing. <laughs> yes. So we should be the happiest people. Why aren't we? Because our brains have all been taught that life isn't good. Life is stressful. Life has all these problems. And when we think like that, when our brain is on the lookout for problems all the time, it's going to create more and it's never going to allow us to be happy. And we're never going to achieve our full potential because we're not using the creative part of our brain, which is the only part which is designed to make it sure we reach our full potential. That's what it's designed to do. Goodness. Okay, so I'm going to do something that's going to fill your calendar. Are you ready? I'm sorry, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I said I'm going to do something that's going to fill up your calendar. Oh, okay. And so for anyone that's curious as curious as i am about okay now i want to go deeper i want to find out not i i now know the basics the fundamentals if they, as they would say in sports uh of everything that's involved and i'm i'm like leaning in i'm about to fall out of my chair i'm so intrigued by this and um uh you provide coaching to people private coaching one-on-one -on -one, in addition to others, and I'm on your main website right now, and I'm going to put that up on a banner and say it verbally. It's liamnaden.com. That's L-I-A-M-N-A-D-E-N.com. And if you go there, and I hope you're okay with me uh, pulling this up here, Liam, and you scroll down a bit, you'll see I'll put it at the top and then back down. For those of you watching, uh, it's about, and for those of you listening, it's just a little more than halfway down the page. It says, Take your life, life back today. Click here. There's a nice orange button there. I hope that's the right one. That's it. Yes. And there you can see as uh, various programs and coaching that are available. Now, his 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 sweet spot is relationships. And he's really um, that's where he's the most uh, studied and most successful. But it sounds to me like it this, this would apply to anyone in any part of their life and all of their life. So imagine if just one spouse or one partner went through this training and then they're happier that bleeds over to the other one and then hopefully they will then go through this same coaching and be on the same wavelength could you imagine any relationship i mean i can just imagine it i'm like this is odd. you know i love my wife she is my why and i i always think it can't get any better than this and then i talk to people like you and go wow you know if there's always a way to improve something i'm in i you know there's always room for improvement so to everyone watching and listening, go to liamnaden.com if you're okay with that, Liam, and uh, to click on that button I described. And then there are many different coaching programs in here and just peruse it, check them out, see which one's best for you. Or is there possibly a way that they could reach out to you directly, Liam, to quickly find out which might be the best fit for them? Sure. Well, all my contact details are on my website as well. And, and yes, I'm very happy to chat with anybody and answer any questions and give them any help.
Yeah, so go to liamnaden.com and just, uh, let's see, about, I'll bet it's there. Where exactly would they find? Just, uh, you'll find it <laughs> if you want it. You'll definitely, there's a bunch of, oh, what, there's social media, all kinds of ways to get in touch with them. And there's a contact form as well. So definitely reach out and find out. Yep, that goes straight to his email. So, whoops, and I shouldn't be clicking around while we're live on a show, but it's what's happening. I want to see people to see. And I know we're over our hour. Are you okay with announcing your brand new book that's coming up? I wanted people to have the ability to uh, get in line for that resource that's coming out very, very soon. Would that be all right, Liam? Do you have still have a few moments? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, let's see. There it is. And I'll pull up the web address for that. And if you would, wouldn't mind, give us a quick overview. And I haven't forgotten everyone that's still here live at that five night state of five star luxury resort that's coming don't don't go anywhere uh, i know we're going over a little bit late but that's okay it's all good so here is his brand new upcoming book called marriage uncounseling i love that title so go ahead uh, liam if you wouldn't mind give us a quick overview of that and what people can expect when they opt into that form on the lower right of marriageuncounseling.com yeah well this book is really uh, the culmination of you know more than a decade working with couples and individuals about what really works in relationships because pretty well everything we've been taught about relationships just like we have with our our life and how to achieve success how to achieve success in relationships pretty well all of that's wrong as well that i've discovered it doesn't really work for people because if it did most people wouldn't have problems in their relationship and yet most people do most people would say you know, my marriage isn't as good as I think it could be, or we have problems. And we justify it and say, well, everybody knows that relationships, you have to work at them. Relationships are difficult. There are always going to be problems. You need to, to work at a relationship. But the thing is, none of that is actually true. And the way, one of the ways to know that that's not true is if you think, if you're in a marriage or relationship, think back to the early days when you first got together with your spouse. Were there problems? Was there stress? Were you working on your relationship? Were you struggling? You weren't. You were there. You were just enjoying yourself, weren't you? It was all exciting. It was fun. So that tells you relate. You don't have to have problems in your relationship. What you're doing if you've got problems is you're doing something wrong. And working on trying to fix the problems, what are you doing? You're living in fear. You're Again, you're doing this pushing hard, trying thing. You're using the wrong part of your brain. So if you really want to, to solve the problems in your relationship, ironically, it's not about working on them. It's not about struggling trying to fix your problems because if you focus on trying to fix any problem in your life and including your relationship, you're only going to end up with more problems. You need to, to realize that problems in your relationship, like your life, are the symptom of what's going on. So in the book, Marriage and Counseling, I talk about the six foundations that these are the foundations that you need to build your marriage on. And they're quite different to what most people, and when you create the right foundations, the problems disappear. The, and things like, I talk about communication. And again, people have got this wrong idea about communication. They say, well, communication's not great in our marriage. Communication's not great in your marriage. That's a symptom of something. It's not the problem. The problem is not your communication. It's it's a symptom of something. So the book really goes into a lot more detail about all of these, these things. And it talks about um, attraction as well. You know, why do we lose attraction in our marriage? And um, yeah, it, it's a different, it's a counter, I call it a counterintuitive approach because it's opposite to what, and again, the name marriage and counseling suggests it's the opposite of what most people think. But it's like what I've been saying with the brain. This isn't what most people think about when they think about success in their, in their life. They think it's about sitting down and setting goals and trying harder and being more motivated and telling themselves positive thinking. And we tend to do that in our marriage or relationship as well. And we wonder why that doesn't work, why it just creates stress. So the beauty is when you use your brain the right way, you not only create a life being the best that you can be, but you also create you can create your marriage or your relationship being the best it can be as well. And as you would know, Brian, and as I said, you know, that's Really, there's nothing more rewarding than having a wonderful um, marriage or relationship that really, you know, gets everything else in your life working better. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. So everyone watching, everyone listening as well, 
marriageuncounseling.com. Go there. Uh, and it's going to be released very soon. So it depends on when you hear this or see this, but I'm sure that it will still be available. You just will take a different track. But right now you can enter your details to be notified of its release and when it comes out. And a little birdie told me that for those of you that do that, when you purchase the book, when it comes out, you'll also get an extra gift of the five ultimate love letters. And that's another amazing, oh my gosh, how many guys would kill for that one? I'm telling you <laughs> right now. And so uh, we're running out of time here and I want to go another four or five hours with you, but uh, I want to be respectful, not only of your time, but all of those that look, we still have everybody sticking on here watching. That's how amazing you are, uh, Liam. Cannot be more appreciative of you spending your time here. And you're, you're just a genius. Uh, I don't know how else to put it. Uh, because you've come up with something that it goes against the grain of what everyone believes to be the right um, the right thing, the right, um, what am I trying to think of, solution. And I didn't do this before, but I want to give you, pay you tribute and homage by one wonderful round of bomb dropping because you've been amazing. So many smart bombs, bombs of knowledge, bombs of wisdom, all being dropped all night long by Liam. I didn't want to interrupt a moment of what you were going through with that earlier. And I do have two things left to, to take care of. One is I promised to give away a five-night stay at a five-star luxury resort. That's coming up next. And right after that, I'm going to ask Liam that all-encompassing important question that he already answered. And he gets a chance to do that again if he wants to play along. I sure hope so. That will be phenomenal. So real quick, before we get into that big question, here is how you enter to win. Don't go to this website now. Write it down. You'll see it on the screen. For those of you watching live, you'll want to go to ryp.im forward slash vacation. Write that down. ryp.im forward slash vacation. And I will be, uh, the team will be monitoring for the entries and that announcement of the winner will be given out later this evening for those of you that enter that to win and we're going to come back quickly because i don't want to lose anybody for this one because this is it's always a very um profound question one that you've already answered <laughs> yes Ann hood's already spot already followed your podcast on spotify already making um impact with more people liam so thank you for that too phenomenal and it's a very profound question i love to, to close every show that because of the variations of answers that have come i i could never have uh guessed how many different questions or answers have come in fact no two people have answered it the same way yet and i've been doing this for about three years and yours was no different i know you already answered it if you're okay may i ask it one more time actually i never says? i never asked it I never asked it. You just answered it. Yeah, you can't give it away. That was it, though. <laughs> so uh, is that okay? Can I ask you that question one more time here real quick, Liam? Yeah, what's the question? <laughs> All right, here we go. Then that means I, I, that gave me the cue. You're ready. Here we go. Are you ready? Drum roll. Yes, yep. that's right. <laughs> All right. Liam Naden, how do you define success? Success is being happy right now. That's it. Woo. And biologically, biology has a word for that. It's called homeostasis. Homeostasis means the perfect functioning of the organism. And every living thing on the planet is biologically designed to live in a state of homeostasis. And, and every living thing has a, a, an, an instrument or a machine called a brain designed to ensure and to strive to to keep that organism in a state of homeostasis which means the perfect functioning and for humans we have a mental and emotional component and that means the optimum mental and emotional functioning as well in other words being happy <laughs> and that's that success is, and that is worthy of one final <laughs> What a phenomenal way to close the show, Liam. You are an amazing man. I appreciate you uh, for being here. I mean, all the way from France. It was two in the morning when we first started. Uh, so hopefully the sun will be coming up for you soon. <laughs> but I cannot uh, express my gratitude more. And this is a record. This is the longest I've ever run a show. 
and oh. I wasn't going to stop it. There was no way. And I appreciate you for hanging on longer and being with us and being uh, basically a product of the product. You know, you're you're not worried about the fact that we ran late. You just kept motoring forward. And I'm glad you did because you're providing people with so much. The first word that comes to my mind is hope. I've never heard of anything like this before. Uh, not not the way you presented it. And I'm very, very intrigued by it. And I can't wait to learn more from you directly, personally, hint, hint, wink, wink. So with that, everyone, be sure, real quick summary, that you want to go to liamnaden.com and contact him and find out what is the best approach for you going forward to live a happy life. Success. There you go. And then also, you don't want to miss on out on registering to get notified when his book is coming out marriageuncounseling.com go there and put in your name and email address and then and then get his book so you can get that wonderful added bonus of the five ultimate love letters and uh, i'm just going to leave that in, t in a tease form and not tell people what that is because you'll want to get that if for no other reason get his book for the five ultimate love letters that one was like i'm like whoo this sounds good and it it did it was good uh oh we got another comment let me check it real quick yes same here Lorianne. thank you so much love this so with that liam uh sadly it's time for us to call it a show uh and i appreciate you once again let's stay in touch please uh mm -hmm. sir and uh i can't wait to see what our next chapter together uh, involves and for everyone else who's been watching and listening who reaches out to you i can't wait to see that calendar of yours absolutely blow up and you swell with happiness that's going to be awesome thank you very uh, much brian it's really uh, been a real honor and a pleasure being on your show thank you for so much for having me my goodness on behalf of the amazing tremendous and stupendous liam naden i am your host brian kelly of the mind body business show it's a wrap. We're done for tonight. We'll see. Oh, everyone have a great holiday. It's right before Thanksgiving for here, uh, people here in the U.S. So enjoy your time. Be with family and then get back to crushing it and serving others and do it without stress or fear the Liam Naden way. Yeah. To do that, you need to reach out to him. All right. That is it for us tonight. So long, everyone. And be blessed. Take care for now. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the Mind Body Business Show podcast at www.themindbodybusinessshow.com.